If it's right to boycott Costa Coffee over a trans cartoon, 0207 862 is the number to give us a ring. So the chain is facing a backlash over a mural showing a double mastectomy scars, which has been taken uh, as a depiction of a trans man. Now, they've been accused of glorifying the procedure, which some people uh, assigned a female at birth elect to have when they are transitioning gender. It was part of a larger mural commissioned for a Pride event last year and has since appeared on Costa Vans. Costa said that they wanted to showcase and celebrate inclusivity and ensure that customers feel unashamedly proud of their identity. What do you think, Lynn? A boycott for a cartoon? I just think a boycott, what's that going to do? Uh, but I can understand the concern and the question surrounding this cartoon. And it's not just Costa, it's Dr. Martins and other companies. And it seems like there's like a corporate rollout with these companies that tend to do this. Why do we need to see like the mutilation of, of, of a person? I understand some people don't feel well, comfortable having breasts. Mutilation's a strong word, isn't well, it? Lots of women get this is. for breast cancer. You know, there's lots of reasons you would have a mastectomy. So mutilation is a tough word. But this, but this isn't about breast cancer awareness. It's more about there, there's been enough studies recently of young girls who now are being pushed into, uh, you know, when they're sitting down with NHS advisors where they they're regretting it. People are starting to regret it. There's not enough. Even on the NHS website, there says there's not enough information to say what actually happens to people, children who undergo hormone therapy with regards to this. And I just think it's too soon for corporate companies to benefit and profit off of this. OK, you, I don't think you can have one of these operations um, for transitioning purposes until you're after 18. But it so children starts, is, it a, children is misleading. Yeah. Kevin? Uh, look, it's, it's, not, it's not a child. It's an adult in that picture. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a trans man. I just find, you know, the, the whole... It's the usual reactionaries who want to cancel other bigots and cry bullies who want to just get their torches and their pitchforks and march. And, you know, they do include a lot of very transphobic uh, people. I don't, think it's a, I don't think it's a great use of a cartoon. And I can see the some people, women who had double double mastectomies from cancer to mm. save their lives, mm. might find it its use somewhat uh, uh, objectionable. But the, but the, I don't it's think just it's a, sen it's a thing, sense of proportion. I don't, I don't think companies are virtue signalling all the time, right? And cost right, pay your staff better. Uh, but it's yeah, not it's just interesting about, it's though. Not just it's about it, the it, I want to go on just, to another guest that we've got, yeah. but it's interesting you bring up the, the term sort of mutilation of, of women's breasts. I wonder whether we feel the same when things are advertised where someone's had a breast augmentation, a, a, an and enlargement of a breast. We do. And I'm, I'm we, not we, sure that people we, are on the same page. Which companies surgery? do, though. Okay. Companies say we shouldn't always go towards trying to enhance our body, enjoy your natural body. Why isn't the same here? Okay, this I am joined natural. now by LGBT journalist uh, Shivani Davi, uh, who spoke about having top surgery last year. Shivani, thank you very much for joining us. What do you think about the reaction to this cartoon? Yeah, it's just people wanting to get their knickers in a twist about absolutely nothing. And I use the word knickers in a gender neutral way. <laughs> I think um, what's happening here is this is a cartoon that was originally uh, made public over a year ago. People now have spotted it and decided they want to take offence to it. Um, what it is, is a trans person, probably, uh, somebody either trans man or a non-binary person who has had an operation to make their body align with who they are. Um, I myself have had this surgery. Um, the idea that it's a mutilation of your body is completely not the case. You have to undergo a series of medical diagnoses and tests in order to be able to make Make sure uh, this is something that you are 100% comfortable with, okay with, uh, something that isn't going to impact your mental health and in fact alleviates a lot of the mental health stress you may have uh, about the way your body is prior to getting this surgery. I think also I just want to really emphasise your point, in this country you can cannot get this surgery if you are under the age of 18. And after the age of 18, you have to prove that you have had a series of a long-standing um, gender dysphoria with your body to be able to get it. You have to have tests from medical doctors. You have to undergo a lot of medical scrutiny in order to make sure you get this. It's not as easy as people walking into a clinic and saying, I want that one. Shivani, um, can, I, can I ask a question? Because I brought it up earlier in the news review uh, when we were discussing this topic. And when I first seen it, now I have uh, many scars. I have scars that are burns. I have a cesarean scar. And I feel very differently about all of those scars. And I just wonder, I mean, we've seen some pictures of you sort of proudly displaying um, your, your top surgery scars. I 
I'm wondering whether you think this is something that in, these individuals would be proud to display. They 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 would be proud of. Their, I wouldn't want to be identified by my scars personally. Um, yeah, and I think it's different for everybody. Some people are proud of their scars. Some people see it as they've overcome something uh, in their lives. Uh, some people would rather not have the scars. You know, every single individual person who has this operation is going to respond differently to that. People, some of them end up getting tattoos to cover up their scars. Mm -hmm. Some of them like having their scars on show. It's it's one of those things where it's completely up to the individual. Shivani, can I just ask, and um, I'm more coming from a place of understanding, so I hope you don't feel that I'm critical at all. But um, it's more for me about you, you identify as they, them. Is that correct? Yeah, so non-binary. I am they them. Oh, okay. So if you consider yourself they them or non-binary, why did you feel the need to have to remove your breasts? Uh, because breasts would re relate to that of a female. But if you're non-binary, and a lot of trans activists tend to say that you know um, gender is a social construct, why did you need to remove them? Um, that's a super personal medical question. I'm happy to answer it, but. Um, it's something that uh, gave me discomfort, something that I for a long time uh, found uncomfortable with my body and had the opportunity to uh, rectify. And so I did that uh, with the guidance of clinicians and medical staff. Um, it, in a similar way, you know, lots of people uh, would argue uh, everyone needs to love their bodies exactly as they are, as, as, as they were born. Everyone's perfect in their own way. And, and I agree with that. But, you know, women still or men or people of all genders still get, you know, minor cosmetic surgery to feel a little bit more themselves. And people don't question that. Things like lip fillers or uh, Botox, things like that. And nobody really bats an eyelid. Um, I understand that the procedure is slightly different and it can be a, a bigger procedure. Um, but essentially, it's for a similar reason to feel a lot more comfortable with your body. Shivani, David, stay with us. We're going to take some calls now. Tony from London, what do you think about boycotting Costa over over this cartoon? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go in there anyway, but I, I don't agree with it at all. I had a double mastectomy and it's uh, it was medical reasons, obviously. And it's just, I can't believe that they, that they can make a cartoon about that. Seriously, women lose the plot sometimes when they have to have a mastectomy. And as, you've just heard, as you've just heard uh, from Shivani, for some people it is a, is a point of pride, it's a point of transition, it's a point of, you know, they're, they're finally growing into the body that they feel that they should have. And, and so although some people may really struggle with it, should we not celebrate it for, for people that, that it's a point of pride? Yeah, if they want to do that for themselves, that's fine. But you should not make a cartoon of it. So you've got a man with a mastectomy. So can I walk down the street with no top on? Well, I mean, I don't see yes. why why not, you Tony. To. But could you? Yes. I don't, uh, I don't. I don't really understand your question, Tony. Yeah, but that's a picture of a man, and he's like having a drink. Yeah. So if I went to the coffee with no top on. That would be all right. Oh, well, with it. I see what you're saying. Okay. Well, I think that some establishments say that they they don't like people coming in without any tops or flip flops or yeah. there's a sort of dress code to go into certain places. So, I mean, I don't know whether Costa has that kind of criteria. I think the yeah. depiction here is of some sort of. I always think it looks quite Egyptian, but I think it might be Greek. Um, no, it doesn't. No, individual with kind of toga not. short things on. No. I think I don't think this is depicting. A real person, and this was also involved in a, a mural yeah, with you, lots you of. You can see what the scars for. Uh, yeah, well, they, they, it's not pretty when you have it done. Do you know what I mean? It's. Um... I no, and, and Tony, that's why I asked uh, Shivani earlier. You know whether they want to, whether they want to be identified by these scars because I have scars as well, and you're right. Some aren't pretty. Some you are proud of, and some you're yeah. less. Uh, <laughs> you identify yeah. less with, and so it is a very personal thing. But you have to accept that for some people, it, it's. Um, is something that they're very proud of and they want to be identified by and they and they want to share that pride with, with everybody else and, and Costa's basically saying that we'll accept you whoever you are. Oh no, I still don't agree with it. Okay. Sorry, I don't I don't agree with it at all. Tony, 
Thank you very much for your call. Alexis from Kent, what's your views on this? Hi, Storm. Love your show, by the way. Um, I'm a transgender woman, and um, I don't feel that these pride campaigns in companies are doing anything to help our communities. Um, it causes discussion, which in some cases might be good, but to be honest, when anything like this happens, all we get is hate online. Mm. Um, people don't understand it. If I if I go around and buy a cup of coffee and there was a trans woman with <laughs> her top off, um, I, I wouldn't find it appropriate and I'd be really uncomfortable about it because well, of children and stuff. Alexis, it's, um, it's an interesting point that you bring up and I think uh, society's views of women and men's bodies is, is a whole other debate that we could speak about for, for hours and hours and hours. Uh, but I suppose uh, I can understand from the trans community all of these discussions fuels division. It seems to always, there's no sort of just open and honest chat in, in terms of trying to educate ourselves. So it's, there seems to be you have to pick one side or the other and, and you're not allowed to, yeah. you, you know, you're not allowed to see both both sides of the argument. But do you I, not I, think, I would think... Do you not think it sorry. is important that we continue to have these conversations until the heat comes out of them so that we can, you know, come to some sort of acceptance, conclusion, education? I think if all shows and all media outlets were, were like this... Uh, show then maybe yes because everyone gets a voice but when I sit there and I watch other channels I have to turn over every, every day at some point someone will talk about a trans issue and there's never a trans person representing us um, and it's just like being rammed down people's throats but not for the right reasons it's not helping or educating anyone it's look at this look at this person with a skull you've got to buy this cup you've got to look at it what about just a cup with all people with all colours shapes and sizes on it well, I think, I think to be fair, that's, that's what they're attempting but to I, do. I agree yeah. with you. I feel like this, or almost, this is using the trans uh, community um, for their own gains. For their own gain. It, they're, they're, the corporates yeah. are using Shivani, it for capitalising on it. Can I get it? Shivani back in this? Because you seem to be quite positive about this campaign, but can you see where Alexis is coming from, Shivani? Yeah, I, I totally see it. I have the same experience as Alexis where I w watch TV and I have to turn the channels over because it's really horrible, hateful, bigoted things about our community. And and that's really tough to have to consume on a daily basis. And social media is even worse than that. Um, I totally understand where you're coming from, Alexis, and it's really painful. I think in regards to Costa doing this and, and what we're talking about today with the backlash that Costa are facing and people sort of saying, we're going to boycott Costa. Well, from my point of view, the way I see that is it means Costa is only going to become a more safe space because you're not going to get people who are anti-trans <laughs> wanting to go and sit and have a coffee in Costa. And it's been years since I've entered a Costa coffee, but you know what? I might go grab one after this. Alexis, because I, 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 a lot of the criticism that's thrown at Costa is that this is going to encourage people um, to transition. I'm just wondering whether you feel that, you know, what you've seen in the media and what you've seen in social media had any sort of influence on your transitioning? No, it's I, I, I trans started my transition when I was 29. I lived as a gay man for all my life. You know, it was a very long decision. None of the media or, or, or anything out external was an input on it. I don't think it, you know, that there's a whole different debate whether it should be thrown in people's faces. I, that, that's a, I don't think it should to a level with young people and stuff, but I just feel like if, if we're going about it the wrong way, we're going, look, here's this cup, you agree with trans stuff or don't buy Costa, and that doesn't create a good vibe for our community, is what I'm trying to say. Alexa, I'm not, I'm not sure this will you know, affect a single uh, Costa sale. I mean, you know, I mean, the, the cartoon's holding a Costa cup. But I just don't think it'll affect at all. But don't you think instead of people having to hide in the shadows, they should just be allowed to live their own lives as, as they want. And the people who object to cartoons like this or people like yourself or others, look, they just have to you know, get over themselves, you know, get a life, just relax, just chill. Yeah, I, I'm not a council culture person at all. Um, I, 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 I said on the phone when I came through, I don't think Costa should be boycotted. I don't agree with that word. I don't like all this. If, you know, if we don't agree with you, don't, don't do it. I don't like that. I think the conversation needs to be had is, are these companies helping the conversation, or are they just creating a conversation? Yeah, it's, it's an interesting one. Do you feel, um, I, I, I don't know, not exposed, but do you feel like Costa is using your story, Shivani, to, to uh, punt some coffees? 
No, I actually don't think that. I, I've looked into the work that Costa do in terms of uh, supporting LGBTQ plus causes. And with Costa, they have supported LGBTQ plus charities for a number of years. I mean, I could go down a rabbit hole of how all corporations are essentially bad, um, but I'm not going to do that. I think we live in a society where uh, capitalism is sort of the way we operate. So mm -hmm. uh, Costa are doing something with the money that they have to try and benefit the LGBTQ plus community. And it's really great to see an organization taking a stance where they support the T in LGBTQ plus. Shivani, thank you very much for joining us for that. Alexis, thank you very much for your call as well. Uh, we're going to have to move on now. After the break, are alcohol tax hikes unfair?